Today was um, was intense so far. When you hear the, the man say and all of that stuff. Two men with a mission. Two men in a hurry. South Korean President Moon Jae-in and North Korean Chairman Kim Jong-un wasted little time getting straight to dialogue after Kim greeted Moon at the airport in Pyongyang earlier. I'm Alex Jensen for NK Now at Dongdae Moon Design Plaza, the official press center for this year's third inter-Korean summit, from which the world is discovering more about this historic meeting. By the time President Moon comes here to Dongdae Moon, or is expected to do so this Thursday, to brief the press on his three-day visit to the North, he'll have hoped to have achieved several interlinked goals. First, denuclearization. This has been Seoul and Washington's stated goal for years, and Chairman Kim has agreed to do so. The problem remains that the US and North Korea can't seem to agree on how to implement it. It's therefore hard to see how much success President Moon can have here. Second, and very much linked to the first point, reviving high-level dialogue between the US and North Korea. This is far more achievable, and the process is already underway after Seoul sent a special envoy to mediate, and US President Donald Trump responded warmly to another letter from Chairman Kim. Third, to reduce tensions on the peninsula. A military agreement this week is certainly possible, but US participation is needed to formally end the Korean War, which Seoul and Pyongyang are pushing for. And last, to continue developing inter-Korean ties. The willingness is there. President Moon has been joined by dozens of politicians, business and cultural icons. But again, the US is holding firm on sanctions until denuclearization can be achieved. And that limits the scope of cooperation. On the plus side, we have seen continued dialogue between South Korea and the US. Seoul's Foreign Minister Kang Kyung-hwa just yesterday spoke to US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and officially they remain on the same page. But we can't say the same for the global community generally. We've seen this week how the US has been clashing with Russia at the United Nations over North Korea sanctions and Pyongyang's state-run media is blaming Washington for the lack of denuclearization progress. That said, the North also reported this morning, this week's summit, is a good opportunity. Let's get a sense of the feeling here. So now I'm standing directly outside the front entrance of the press center here at Dongdae Moon Design Plaza and a very tall man next to me is Oliver Hotham who's actually from NK News and is ordinarily based in Seoul. Pleasure to speak with you today. Pleasure, thank you very much for having me. And already we've had a bit of drama, haven't we? I mean, today's the first day of talks but there was that moment again, one of those pictures that will live long where Chairman Kim Jong-un greeted President Moon Jae-in as he came off the aircraft. Yeah, it's very um, interesting to see that, you know, there was a lot of speculation. At first, I kind of thought that Kim Jong-un maybe wouldn't make an appearance, that they would maybe meet later in the day. But of course, that music that we've come to know pretty well sort of popped up and you hear the, the man say and all of that stuff. And, you know, I think it was pretty clear that Kim Jong-un was going was gonna to show up then. This week, we've been going through various ambitions that President Moon will have. Some of them do rely on the United States. Given that fact, what are your expectations? Well, I think South Korea is going into the summit with an extremely ambitious plan. I mean, we've seen over the last few months, dialogue between the US and North Korea has stalled. There's been a lot of miscommunication between um, between the two sides about what denuclearization really means, um, what the timetable for that um, will involve. And I think the South Koreans' main objective here really needs to be get the North Koreans to commit to something on paper, a plan for how they're going to take the steps towards um, what they promised essentially in April. Um, you know, we've had a lot of talk but not much action from the North Koreans and I think that needs to be forthcoming at this stage really. So I'm now in the belly of the press centre area, if you like, here at DDP, and sitting alongside me is Andres Sanchez-Brown from Spain's FA News Agency. What is your sense of what this week can achieve, how important it could turn out to be? Well, hopefully it will turn out as an even more important step towards dialogue, peace, denuclearization. Um, 
course, that's the end of the road. It's a far stretch, but um, I think it's you know time after two previous summits, maybe um, both Koreas can flesh out something a little bit more substantial this time, right? That seems to be a bit of a key word or, or variations of it, fleshing out what we saw in April. But the fact the US is not involved in Pyongyang, does that place a certain limitation on what can be done? Well, of course, I mean, um, a trilateral summit would definitely uh, achieve much more, I think, in, in when it comes to denuclearization itself. But as uh, President Moon himself has pointed out, you know, um, having um, inter-Korean relations on a good track can actually um, benefit a lot when it comes to uh, DPRK U.S. dialogue. Today was um, was intense so far. Uh, we've had Kim Jong Un uh, greet um, Moon Jae In right on the tarmac. I think we were all so focused on what was going on in Pyongyang, we actually tend to forget where we are. <laughs> Very interesting insight into what it's like, even from Seoul, to cover an inter-Korean summit in Pyongyang. And we hope in just a few days' time, we'll be greeted by President Moon himself here to let us know exactly what this week has achieved. Until then, really, we speculate, although we will continue to watch out for more updates from the North Korean capital.